I've never seen such a woman before. She picked up the chocolate on the table regardless of whether it was hers or not, and directly broke off a piece and stuffed it into her mouth. When the man saw it, he looked puzzled. This piece of chocolate is clearly his. In order to swear sovereignty, he also hurriedly broke off a piece of chocolate and put it into his mouth. The woman was not weak either, and so they shared the packet of chocolates. They looked at each other and laughed. In the meantime, Mike's hands didn't stop. Mike is a sketcher. He secretly sketches the woman's portrait. But before Mike could say anything to her, she arrived at the station. Not long after that, Mike was also at the station. As he gathered his brushes, he realized that his chocolates were still in his pocket. It turned out that it was the woman's chocolate that they had just eaten, but it wasn't long before fate brought them together again. And then Mike took out the portrait and gave it to her. Maisie thought he was very good. They also chatted very well. But unfortunately, the woman was about to arrive again. Mike still didn't say anything. He was about to turn around and look for his seat. Maisie stopped him. She gave Mike his portrait back. It turned out that the woman had already left her contact information on the back of the card. And so it was that they fell in love. They entered into marriage. They had a child. A family of three is a happy life. And then the picture changed and their child is six years old. On this day, Mike is videotaping his son remotely. They were playing a fighting game through the hologram while they were having a great time. Mike felt a dizzy spell. It turns out that Mike had been terminally ill a month earlier. And this was not the first time he had fainted. Every time he fainted, his wife didn't notice. In order not to worry his wife, he chose to deliberately hide this matter. Thankfully, future world human beings have mastered the technology of human cloning. They just need to extract their DNA, and they can reproduce another identical version of themselves. Mike went to a cloning facility. He tries to get a clone to replace him and keep Maisie company. But what worried him the most was that the clone would suffer from his terminal illness again. With Mike's permission, they went to a basement. And it was here that he met his other self. If you've seen your other self, don't doubt that you're not looking in the mirror. Because in the future mankind has completely mastered the cloning technology. He touches the clone's hand as if he were touching his right hand with his left hand. There is no difference. But the thought that this clone will replace him and his family for the rest of his life. Mike had very mixed feelings. He terminated the cloning project. He went home alone in an amend limousine. When he got home, Mike was ready to confess to his wife. He wanted to say he was going to die, but he couldn't get the words out of his mouth because he knew his wife was a very emotional person. Many years ago, his wife's brother had died in a car accident. Her wife was crying her heart out. She took the blame for it all on herself, and she didn't get over it for the next few years. Mike couldn't imagine how his wife was going to take it all in after his death. And to top it off, his wife was pregnant with their second child. He went to see the other clone. This woman was a saleswoman. Even she didn't know she was a clone. Watching the look between this woman and her child, he knew that this was the kind of warmth that only a relative could feel. It gave Mike a little comfort. He liked his wife, that he was going away on business. He contacted the doctor and agreed to continue the project. When he arrived at the cloning company, he saw the saleswoman in the flesh. He told the woman that the clone was doing well out there. She was also doing well with her daughter. The woman's face didn't show a hint of relief. Instead, there was resignation in her eyes. After that, Mike and the clone began to synchronize their memories. The images of the past appeared in his mind like a slideshow. He and his wife from knowing and loving each other to the formation of a family. That's how he knew she was perfect. The clone woke up as if he had been dreaming for a long time. The doctor told the clone the only difference between him and Mike was this black mole on his hand. After a long time of digestion, he realized that he was a clone replacement. Mike also arrived in time to get the news, seeing the clone's answers to the doctor's questions. He even knew some of the details that he had overlooked. They saw each other as if they were looking in a mirror. They felt both familiar and strange. In the time that followed, Mike found that they were identical in their state of mind and in their eating habits. They were all exactly the same. Even his confused clone could see right through. Soon the test came to phase two. Under Mike's watchful eye, the clone began to talk to his wife by video. But his wife was oblivious. They were talking so well together. Instead, he felt like he was the third party. He couldn't help but hang up the video call. This action caused the clone's displeasure. They quarreled. The clone was not willing to be a substitute. He waited for Mike to decide whether to live or die. Mike, on the other hand, was not happy with the clone's attitude. But while they were arguing, Mike's old illness returned. When he woke up again, the clone found Mike. He was sorry for his offense. Mike also forgave him. That day, Mike offered to go home and say goodbye to his wife one last time. And the clone could only watch from the monitor of Mike's 
contact lenses. He watched as he stabbed a pencil into the palm of his hand to distinguish the markings of his identity. He hated the fact that he was just a substitute. And just as Mike reached his doorstep, his old illness returned. This left the clone completely overwhelmed. If the original dies, then his wife would find his body, and then the clone would no longer have to exist. Mike soon woke up. His wife didn't see him because she had her back to the window. He rushed to his car. He planned to rest for a while before going home, but in the car, he passed out again. When he woke up again, Mike had been picked up by the doctor and returned to the laboratory. But what he didn't expect was, the doctor told him, the clone had returned home in his place. The man could only watch his clone with his family in front of the video, and there was nothing he could do about it. He saw the clone having fun with his son. He hears his son calling the clone his father. He saw his wife snuggling in the clone's arms. The clone tells his wife to let go of her heart, and he could only witness it from a distance. Because Mike was terminally ill, his days were numbered. So he arranged for the clone to live with his family instead. But it didn't take long. The clone frequently removed his contact lenses for video. This made Mike even more anxious. So he went to the doctor. But the doctor said he felt sad for you. But it was also uncomfortable for him to have his family under surveillance. Every second was a torture for Mike. He even dreamed of his son being raped by a clone. He woke up in the dream and couldn't take it anymore. So he snuck out of the lab that night. He carefully pushed open the door of his house. He walked silently up the stairs to his study. He saw the clone's shed with his wife. He realized that everything was fine. But just then, the clone suddenly opened the door. He gestured to Mike to keep quiet. At that moment, Mike felt that he was the outsider. The clone gave Mike his ring back. He told him to say his final goodbyes to his family. He went to the bedroom and woke up his sleeping son. He toasted his son with apple juice instead of beer. He imagined what his son would be like when he had a family. Mike was instantly devastated, but his son didn't know it was their last goodbye. He went to his wife's bedroom. He gently woke his sleeping wife. When he got back to the car, he and the clone had a long talk. He gave the clone his wedding ring. He asked the clone to treat his family well. When he returned to the lab, the doctor told Mike the clone had been completely wiped of all memories of the clone. From now on the clone became the real Mike, and Mike will leave here without a word. But he would still feel the loss, after all. Leaving without meaning is the most unacceptable, the doctor told Mike. The clone had left him a gift, saying you love me, I love you, look me in the eyes and tell me you love me, okay, I love you, always have, and always will. In the future, if there is such a clone, he or she has your complete DNA and all your memories. Would you be willing to let the clone live on in your place?